I'm Nick Sharp, and this is Point Trinet, Learn Triangulation of 3D Point Sets. We study the problem of generating 3D shapes in geometric learning. It's a very exciting time for this problem, with recent strategies using a wide range of representations. In this work, we'll present a new method which directly generates triangle meshes as output. It avoids the use of intermediate representations, is general, leveraging only local geometry, and scalable, running fast and scaling to large point sets. We're not so much interested in general 3D reconstruction, but rather in creating a layer which spans the gap between point-based representations and meshes in geometric learning. We'll see how our method opens the door to standard algorithms on triangle meshes, as well as new architectures for learning problems. To get there, we consider a problem formulation which hasn't been treated with deep learning before, namely point set triangulation. In point set triangulation, the input is a 3D point set, and the output is a triangle mesh which has those points as vertices. Generally, we want the result to be geometrically accurate and have regular connectivity too. This problem has been treated extensively in computational geometry, however none of these methods are differentiable, which is crucial for our context. It's really important to remember that point set triangulation is different from general 3D reconstruction. Rather than outputting any surface, you're restricted to only those meshes which have the given points as vertices. With this constraint, it's fallen out of favor as a method for general 3D reconstruction. However, we believe that point set triangulation deserves more attention in the context of deep learning. Generating point clouds is straightforward, so if we can directly and differentiably triangulate, triangulate them, we open up all sorts of promising strategies for working with meshes in deep learning. Our formulation makes use of two separate learned networks. The first is a classification network, which predicts whether a triangle belongs in the generated mesh or not. And the second is a proposal network, which suggests new candidate triangles. Point trinet iteratively applies these two methods to generate a triangle mesh. Given some point set, we begin with arbitrary seed triangles and alternate between classifying proposing classifying proposing triangles and eventually find a coherent triangulation of the point set. One of the key challenges of this problem is that choosing a set of triangles is inherently a discrete operation without smooth derivatives, preventing the use of gradient-based techniques. Our solution is to model the problem via a probabilistic mesh, where we associate some probability with each generated triangle. Good triangles which should definitely appear have a probability near 1, whereas unwanted triangles get a probability near 0. Working with this fuzzy, probabilistic surface allows us to formulate losses and train our networks with standard backpropagation. The main component of point trinet is the classification network. It classifies whether a given triangle should appear in the mesh as a function of the local neighborhood. Our intuition for the design of this network is that although triangulation is a global problem, it's driven largely by local concerns. For instance, in classical Delaunay triangulation, the empty circumcircle test is sufficient to select a triangle. More precisely, our classification network is structured as follows. Given a query triangle, we gather some nearby points and nearby triangles and encode these as input to a point net. The point net then learns to generate the prediction score as a value from 0 to 1. This strategy has many benefits. It's simple and efficient, it'll be rigid and permutation invariant, and easily adapts to variable neighborhood sizes. One key to making this work is the choice of encoding strategy for nearby points. We expect that these predictions depend on both the arrangement of the local neighborhood and the triangle shape. We present a simple solution to encode nearby points in a way which naturally also records the triangle geometry. In particular, given a query triangle and some nearby point, We'll encode the point as a vector in R6. The first three coordinates of this vector are the Cartesian coordinates with respect to a, cart a frame aligned with one edge of the triangle. The next three coordinates are the barycentric coordinates of the point after projecting it into the plane of the triangle. Using these barycentric coordinates is really important. Not only are they a useful feature, but when coupled with the Cartesian data, they implicitly encode the shape of the query triangle. Of course, all this is an encoding for a nearby point. To encode a nearby triangle, we just encode its three vertices and take the max and min. The resulting encodings are rigid and variant and capture both the neighborhood arrangement as well as triangle shape, and we find them to be extremely effective in practice. The classification network does a good job at identifying desirable triangles, but to apply it we need a set of candidates. Exhaustive enumeration of all possible candidates doesn't scale. Our solution is to leverage a proposal network. This proposal network predicts new candidates adjacent to existing triangles. More precisely, across each edge of an existing triangle, the proposal network assigns scores to nearby points 
for serving as a third vertex of a new triangle. These scores are then sampled to generate triangle candidates. For any given query triangle, we again gather nearby points and encode them as input to a point net, which learns to predict these neighbor scores. Finally, these neighbor scores can be sampled to generate new candidate triangles. Bringing this all together, Point Trinet takes as input a 3D point set and alternates between proposing new triangle candidates and classifying existing candidates, iteratively generating an output mesh. At training time, one can imagine unrolling this whole procedure, kind of like a recurrent neural network, though we find it sufficient to backpropagate only through the final iteration for training purposes. To train these networks, we make use of standard geometric loss functions, but remember that since we're working with probabilistic triangles, we really want the expectation of some desirable geometric quantity. A bidirectional chamfer loss penalizes the expected distance between the predicted mesh and some underlying surface, while an overlap loss penalizes the likelihood that triangles intersect in space. We also make use of a water tightness loss, because in this formulation, manifoldness of the resulting triangulation is not free. We find it highly effective to just add a penalty which penalizes the likelihood of non-manifold edges in the resulting triangulation. Lastly, we train the proposal network by encouraging its predictions to match the classifications. Intuitively, the proposal network is trying to generate proposals which will receive a high classification score on the next iteration. Our main experiment is to train point trinet to triangulate point clouds from the ShapeNet dataset. As input data, we first uniformly sample one set of points from each shape, which will serve as the vertex set to be triangulated, and we then separately sample another set of points, which will serve as the representation of the underlying surface for, ident for evaluating chamfer distance. It's really important to note that this training process is unsupervised, in the sense that we're not training to match the triangles in ShapeNet. All we need is some representation of the underlying shapes, which is sufficient to measure distance. A few more details. Our method is geometric and general by nature, so we treat all classes simultaneously. And as an efficiency optimization, we can train on many small patches of the input. We compare the results to classic computational geometry scheme. There are no prior learned methods which tackle this task. We quantitatively evaluate results for approximation accuracy, manifoldness, and water tightness. Full details appear in the paper, but in general, we more or less match the performance of classical schemes. We have somewhat better geometric accuracy, but slightly worse water tightness. It's important to note that it might not even be possible to significantly improve on classical methods here. A poorly sampled point set probably does not admit any triangulation, which is both geometrically accurate and totally manifold. But it's good to see that point trinet yields outputs comparable to classical schemes, and of course it has many other benefits, like differentiability. I should note that our method is pretty efficient in practice. We do all this training in a few hours on a single consumer GPU, and triangulating the examples you see here takes only about a second in our unoptimized code. Because the functions we learn are just functions of the local geometry, networks trained on ShapeNet can be immediately applied to very different kinds of data. On the left is a synthetic shape, and we see that point trinet even automatically adapts to varied sampling density. And on the right, we triangulate a range scan of a cathedral. Note that in some settings, the small holes remaining after our method runs might be undesirable. But these can be greatly mitigated with a simple hole filling procedure as a post process. As I initially mentioned, these meshes are really exciting because they support standard algorithms for downstream tasks. Here, we compute geodesic distance from a source point, and here we perform shape editing, deforming the shape via a handle placed at one endpoint. These are both standard algorithms for triangle meshes from geometry processing. Since our method is direct and differentiable, you could even imagine differentiating th through these algorithms in a long learned pipeline. One of the most exciting uses of this work is that methods which output points can be automatically upgraded to output triangles. Here, we take a standard point cloud autoencoder architecture and append point trinet to generate a triangle mesh as output. The whole system can be trained end to end, and we essentially has a, have a decoder which is directly outputting triangle meshes. Of course, this is very preliminary, but it demonstrates what we hope will be an important use of point trinet moving forward. Wrapping up, we've presented point trinet, the first deep method to tackle the problem of point set triangulation. It's direct, general, and scalable, opening the door to many exciting applications leveraging triangle meshes. Unlike implicit representations, we have to work hard to get manifoldness in our output, and future work could continue adjusting architecture and losses to improve manifoldness and water tightness. We're also interested in using latent data at points to guide the triangulation process, and more broadly bridging the gap between learned techniques such as this and classical methods with theoretical guarantees. With that, I'll conclude, and thank you for your time.